Let's bring your text to life. We'll explore After Effects basics for creating professional-looking animations, showing you my process from start to finish. Let's dive into it. Also, if you want to follow along with project files, check the link below. So in After Effects, in our project panel on the left-hand side, if you don't see your project panel, you can go to Window, Project. I'm going to click on my project panel, right-click, and go to New Composition. Then I'm just going to make sure this is the right size, 3840 by 2160 and I'll give it a name. Okay, so there's nothing in my frame. That's why it's black. You could toggle the transparency here. And I'm just gonna leave it black for now. And then up here in the horizontal type tool, I can click on that or I could do Command T. I'll click my spot and I'll type in my text. Now let me just reposition it. I'm gonna select designs and I'm gonna navigate to my fill parameter and I'm just gonna make this white. So once I have my text, you can see it's right down here in my text layer. If I drop this down, you can see some parameters that you can edit. I'm going to show you how to animate this and make it look quite dynamic. There's a few things you could do. If I press the P key, the position parameters are going to pop up. And I could just keyframe the position changes like you would in Adobe Premiere. So if I started my position out of the frame, and I went to about two seconds in, and I just made it come into the frame, if I right click my keyframe and I go down to keyframe assistant, I could easy ease my keyframes. And so this is easy ease in. If I want to make it quicker, I could just move this keyframe closer. And one thing I really like about After Effects is you could actually enable motion blur on each of your layers, which is this little circle right here. If you just enable it, it basically just makes your animations look more realistic and organic. You can see the difference. Okay, I'm just going to remove my position keyframes for now. So I'm going to walk you through my animation process from start to finish. With my layer selected, I'm going to hit Command D to duplicate it. And I'll click on the eye to hide my bottom layer. I'm just going to keep that just as a reference. And with my top layer highlighted, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to Create, Create Shapes from Text. And this will take my text layer and it's going to create shapes based on what the text font is. So you're probably wondering why you would do this, but having a shape layer allows you a lot more flexibility with animations. You'll see an example in a minute. If I click on my pen tool up here and I have my fill in stroke to the sides, if I wanted to make my fill transparent, I could just click on the fill and then I could click on this icon here. And as you can see, it gets rid of the fill, but it still maintains the shapes. If I click on the stroke parameter, I can make this just a white stroke and you can see it's very faint. I can increase the pixels to make it even thicker. I'll stick with five and you can see that I have a really nice outline here. And you see in the contents, each letter has its own parameter. If I wanted to change my word, for instance, if I highlight lines two and I wanted to change those colors, I could just go to stroke with those selected and I could just change the color. Okay, so for now, I'm going to close my contents and I'm going to go over to add and hit this little arrow right here. And this is where you could do a lot of fun stuff. I'm going to go to the trim paths. This is one of my favorite After Effects features. So the trim paths tool allows you to actually animate your shape layer. Let me just navigate up here and toggle off my mask and shape path visibility. And you can see it a little bit better. As I animate the end percentage, you could see it animate. So that's what I'm going to use as the base of my animation. So I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to hit the stopwatch and make a keyframe at zero to zero, not one. I'm actually going to bring this keyframe to the beginning and I'll bring another keyframe to about two seconds in and I'll bring this to 100%. Super smooth. I can adjust the keyframes using the keyframe assistant as I did before. And you can see it creates a really nice, smooth animation. And if I want to liven it up even more, I could click on the offset parameter and I can just go to my next keyframe. If you want to navigate to each keyframe easily, you could just use these little arrows here and it brings you to the next exact spot of your keyframe. So I'll just use this top arrow to navigate to my two second keyframe. And here I'm just going to do one full revolution. So one times zero degrees, that's just one full 360 degree revolution. 
So you can see what that does is it makes everything look much more dynamic, sped up. It really just catches your eye. So then from here, I could add motion blur and it's starting to come together really nicely. So next, what I could do is I could duplicate this layer. And if I select my bottom layer and hit the U key, that's gonna be a shortcut to reveal all my keyframes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all my keyframes and I'm just gonna nudge it a few frames over. Then I'm gonna go up to my stroke parameter and I'm just gonna change the color to more of a burnt orange. And you'll see what that does is it just adds another layer of animation and it just makes it look really dynamic. Now let's fill it in. So if I take my text layer, reveal that and bring it to the top, I'm gonna to right click and go to create. Instead of create shapes from text, I'm gonna do create masks from text. And it's gonna create a solid layer and it's just gonna make masks based on your font. If you hit the M key, you could see each specific mask that it creates. So if I just re-enable this toggle mask button, you can see the shapes that are created. Now my only problem is this is all coming from one shape layer, so it's really only one color, the white. So if I wanna make this two different colors, what I have to do is I have to duplicate this, and on my bottom layer, if I make this one designs, I could actually delete each mask up to the letter D. And then my top layer, I do the inverted of that. I could delete all the letters of designs. So now we have lines two and designs on separate layers. So if I just click on one of them, I could do command shift Y. And this is actually just a shortcut that brings up the solid settings of that layer. So I'll make that my light orange. So now once we have that, we can move that down a little bit. And in my effects and presets, if I go to the stroke effect and I bring that onto my layer and under path, I'm going to hit all masks under color. I'm just going to grab this color. And instead of on original image in paint style, I'm going to change that to reveal original image. So then I could use these parameters to actually animate this. So if I started with the end point and I animated that in, we'll see how that looks. Create a keyframe at zero. And then I'll move this a couple seconds in, and then I'll bring that to 100%. And then while that's animating, I'm gonna also make the brush size in those same time frame parameters. I'll make the brush size get as big enough as it needs to get to fill in the gaps. Okay. We'll see how it looks if I just do the brush size and I take off the end point. And I just make it kind of fill in with the brush size. That looks much better. I'm going to just make sure I enable motion blur. And I'm going to move that layer right to the bottom. So the stroke goes over it. And I'm just going to get my timing right here. So I'm going to make it a little bit faster. I'm going to make my keyframes easy ease. And I'm just going to shift it right to where the lines all connect. And then that's when this is going to start filling in. All right, that's looking really good. So now another thing building on that, I could duplicate this layer. And then the bottom layer, I could do Command Shift Y again. And I could just change this color to white. And if I hit U, revealing the keyframes, I could just shift it down a little bit so it's a little bit ahead of the layer above it. And this creates a really cool effect that it's almost like it's hollow and it's filling in. So just playing around with these parameters and just a little bit of creativity, you could add some really dynamic titles to your video without spending a fortune on templates. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you want this project file to work from, check the description below.